Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to show you how to color this cute pie bakery card. And I'm going to show you 12 other cards that I made with the new Ellen Hudson release. Do not be afraid of this picture. I know there's a lot of Christmas in it, and some people break out into hives already, but the season is coming, so this is your warning. I'm making a non-Christmas card today, and I'll show you a couple here that are non-Christmas. This one uses the wood grain background, which I stamped over almost the whole thing. I barely did any masking other than the Latte Love Cups. Those are from an older release, but I colored right over top of the Grout Gray ink from MFT in order to color that background. For Halloween, there are going to be a couple of things. There's the spiders and then this cute little stamp set with ghosties and pumpkins and stuff in it. And of course, everything comes with dyes. There's two sentiment sets. One is a little mini set if you like smaller sentiments and then one that has larger sentiments. And all of that is linked in the doobly-doo as well as over on the blog. One of my favorite sets in this one is the Christmas characters. And there's these little floating heads. And I came up with fun ways that you can use floating heads and make a scene out of them. There's the elves in bed. And then, the, of course, the stockings aren't floating heads. But I used two of them with a fireplace. And then added the Santa Claus with the reindeer. And then colored the whole background. And added everything down to the house. Over on Ellen's channel later this month, not right now, but make sure you're subscribed over there, is going to be my little snowman card. And so if you want to go see that, then go sign up and subscribe. Next up is the Amaryllis, Mondo Amaryllis, which I know a lot of the team is going to be using in this hop, so I'm not coloring that one today, but I did one with like just a splash of color around the back and then one with color across the whole thing because that's what makes things look white if you color the background behind it or put some kind of color back there. But my favorite is this one, and I love the window. I'm going to be doing a winter indoor scenes kind of class in September, I think. So stay tuned to maybe get that one. Next up is the tags, which I'll use later this winter as well. And then this is the set that I'm going to use for the cards today. Actually, this is not it. Just the little bear is from a very old release but he's been getting lots of things to wear. So I colored him there, and, and you'll see why I'm showing you that summer card in just a minute. This is a wagon that comes with the new bearware set, and the packages are from the Christmas characters set. So I combined them there, and then the sentiment is from a set that has all, all kinds of, if I can even speak, cool retro sentiments. Here's the wagon again, but I used the chicken from last month's good egg set which I thought was hilarious when combined with the uh, KFC sign. I know, I'm not even sure who I'll send that card to. It was just fun to do. And then, of course, the pumpkins can be in the wagon. And I added the little Give Him Pumpkin to Talk About stamp and colored a background, which I will link you to a background that's similar to that that I did in another video. But this is the card I'm going to make today. And I added the apron onto the bear, and I made an apron for the little bear, and we've got the wagon and the whole pie thing. But I wanted to do this one because of the background on another card. I did this one last month, and I just showed people on the blog, and they said, how did you make the background? I don't show you how easy that is by putting pies in the background on this card. So I started with my masking, and I used the little bear, the little beach bear, for a mask placement. I wanted the bear in the same place. So first I put the wagon where I knew it would line up with him. I lined up my apron where I knew that was going to be and masked it out. And then I ended up cutting a mask out for the apron. And then I stamped the bear on top of that. Now his hands are going to disappear there. His hands are not going to be in front because I didn't choose to mask them out that way. I did add the little pie on there once I had everything together in my Misty. But what I am going to end up doing is stamping the bear on a separate piece of paper and gluing the arms on. You'll see how that works in a little bit. But I'm going to do the background first. And I'm going to stamp it in grout gray. It's the same gray that I used for the wood grain in that first card with the coffee cups. And it's a very light color. You can color right over top of it as long as your colors are darker than the grout gray. 
So when I'm stamping this background and I'm just sliding my paper along so I end up with the pie on the same shelf across the whole card, then all I have to do is color right over top of it. I'm not masking out those guys any further than I had than needed. Um, I'm actually looking to see if there's anything white in the area and that kind of thing I would have to mask out, but everything's going to be darker than this grout gray, so I'm not really worried about it. So just keep moving my paper and even hanging it outside of the misty. Just be careful your misty's not dirty on that edge because you'll get ink on it. And then I'll move the pie up and make another shelf. Now when I did it with mixed items, I did them by hand. So I drew a little light line with a light marker and I, I stamped them by hand rather than using the misty. It's easier to do if you have just one big, big scene you're doing like this and do the same image. So to complete the shelf, I took a W1 to do the darkest areas right in between the pies. And then you can use a W0 or a W00 to just add some flicking above it. And that's really it. It's like super, super easy to just give them enough background that the pies pop out of the background just slightly. Next up is the floor, and I've done these floors before, so I'll just kind of zip through this really quick. Using a light color to sketch it in, if I did it with pencil, I would end up with lines in there, and you know, there's all, all that trapping of lines. If you're using a dark color like this, then you don't necessarily need to worry about trapping lines, but you can also just you know, do a, a floor in another color. I had considered actually doing a pink, pink squared floor, and then I decided I needed the contrast of it. And over here on the right hand side, I actually goofed up and my lines got a little wonky, but I knew I was going to trim this out anyway, so I just kind of threw in an extra stroke there. Didn't worry about it because I'm going to cut that part off. Then comes the very simple, you know, I guess comparatively simple coloring of the bears. And you can see I've got my secondary bear stamped so that I can just do the arms and then I will cut them out. Somehow the footage disappeared for the rest of the apron. However, you're going to see the apron on the other bear, so don't worry about that. To put the arms in here, I gave really dark shadows under where the arms are going to be glued down. I'm only going to use that really dark color in there and then I'm moving to a lighter dark brown and then a medium tone brown to finish out the, the roundedness of the bear. And then I'll move to the lightest color to do that final blending. I left a little lighter color around the snout to make it look like it's popping forward a little bit. And then on the arms, I'm not using the darkest brown, just using that the, the not so darkest brown, the mid-tone, and then going over it one more time with the light. Since we're gonna be doing some branding on our little, little pie bakery here, I decided to make the wagon pink to match the little little aprons they're wearing. And here's an apron for the other bear because I was disappointed at first. I thought that was going to be an apron for the little bear because there is a little bear in this bear wear set. So the bear has a little friend. And I thought, oh no, the little bear has to wear one too. So I made my own. I just basically drew in what I saw on the other one and I colored right over top of it. Just the same way that I stamped right over top of things, I colored right over top of it because the brown was going to color the cover over the pink. And I have thicker pink stripes with thinner orange stripes in between them. Just to add detail, because that's how I roll. I add weird things in there that aren't necessary, but they sure, sure are cute. So then I'll do the same coloring on the little bear as I did on the big bear. Now you could add a Christmas or a uh, Thanksgiving sentiment to something like this. They're carrying pie, but you could also make this a cherry pie, make it a summer card, that kind of thing. And then I'm just kind of putting in my finishing details on this. I decided that I was just seeing too much of the floor. The floor was becoming too important. And I went over the whole thing with a light coat of a C3. And that just dulled the importance of the floor down just a little bit so that the emphasis is still on the bears and the wagon. And I darkened up the wagon a little bit because I wanted the word delivery to show up on there since they're gonna use that as a delivery wagon for their pies. And I just, this card is one of those I, that makes me laugh. And it, it kind of makes me laugh because a lot of Ellen Hudson's stamps do. Julie is the, the genius behind a lot of the hilarity. And 
her and the sentiments are just a kick in the pants. Fit to be tied. Seems like it would be a good name for an actual bakery. <laughs> just really enjoyed making this card. I enjoyed making all of them because now I have a head start on some Christmas cards finally. Everybody else is rolling with them. I make like 200 a year, so I need to get started. So I'm kind of glad that there are some Christmas stamps already coming out. All right, I will see you guys later on. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget to go to the blog hop because there's lots more inspiration. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.